comment. So the person, he gave me a phone call actually and asked me to do this. So his concern was this. There's a person who believes that the Holy Ghost does not convict of sin, but only the conscience. That's it. So the person was troubled saying, but you know, I need help with this one. Is it true? Well, no, it's not true. The Holy Ghost does convict you of sin too. It's not just conscience. So we're going to look at several verses. First of all, go to Acts 23. <clears throat> Acts 23. What you're going to notice is this, is that what accompanies the conscience, all right, what accompanies the conscience to convict you is the Spirit too. You're going to see that, all right? Look at Acts chapter 23, verse 1. And Paul, earnestly beholding the council, said, Men and brethren, I have lived in all good conscience before God until this day. All right, so you notice right here, Paul is saying, I have lived in all good conscience. All right, so he knows that the conscience is what convic convicts him. It's his witness. So he uses that as his witness. But notice that similar wording is used for the Holy Spirit. Go to Romans 9. Romans 9. It's not just conscience. Paul believed it was more than just conscience. It was the Holy Spirit too. Go to Romans chapter 9, verse 1. Romans chapter 9 and verse 1. All right. If somebody has that, can somebody read that please? Anybody at all? Read Romans chapter 9, verse 1. I say the truth in Christ, I lie not, my conscience also bearing me witness in the Holy Ghost. Alrighty, so I don't know if our brother who read that can say that confidently, but Paul, he could say that confidently. No, I'm just kidding, brother. <laughs> just kidding. But anyways, <laughs> so we see right here, we see right here, Paul, see, he used that same wording as Acts 23.1. There's no doubt. The conscience that convicts, what goes along with that is the Holy Spirit as well. There's absolutely no doubt about that. So the Holy Spirit, it follows along. It follows along. It will follow along with the conscience that convicts. Let's also look at Genesis chapter 6. Genesis chapter 6. Now, I'm not going to be able to read all these verses, so I'd appreciate if everybody, if they can get involved and read the verse, all right? So if anyone can read Genesis chapter 6, verse 3. What we got to understand is this, is that it's not just this passage that shows that Holy Spirit falls along the conscience that convicts. There are too many verses that show that the Holy Spirit, it does convict you. And there are people who reject the conviction from the Holy Spirit. All right, Genesis chapter 6 and verse 3. Can somebody read that for us? <laughs> My spirit shall not always strive with man, for that he is flesh, yet his days shall be an hundred and twenty years. Now, did you notice that? So, during Noah's time period at Genesis 6 verse 3, and then see these verses I wrote down, so you all can jump ahead to these one, alright? I'm not going to call upon it. You might as well jump to these one. But in Genesis chapter 6 verse 3, you'll notice that while mankind was sinning against God during Noah's day, that verse says, my spirit will not always strive with man. See that? So God's Holy Spirit was convicting and dealing, struggling with their flesh. See that? Their flesh kept resisting the Holy Spirit. See, that's where you know the Holy Spirit convicts you. Because if you look up all the verses where people resisted the Holy Ghost, why were they resisting unless the Holy Spirit was in them dealing with them? See that? So there is conviction here. There's no doubt the Holy Spirit convicts you. All right, let's look at Exodus 35, 21. Exodus 35, 21. Can somebody read that for us? And then the next one, jump to Zechariah 7. And they came, everyone whose heart stirred him up, and everyone whom his spirit made willing. And they brought the Lord's offering to the work of the tabernacle of the congregation, and for all his service, and for the holy garments. So you notice right here, see, their heart was dealing with them. See, their heart was dealing with them to give to the Lord. But you'll notice that when their hearts are dealing with them to give to the Lord, 
What accompanies that? The Holy Spirit, the Bible says. The Holy Spirit was convicting them to make them willing. All right, Zechariah chapter 7, verse 12. Zechariah 7, verse 12. Can somebody read that for us? Hey, they gave their <laughs> hearts as an adamant stone, lest they should hear the law and the words which the Lord of hosts hath sent in his spirit by the former prophets. Therefore came a great wrath from the Lord of hosts. Now, did you see that? I think that was even more plain. That verse said that those people deliberately rejected, resisted the Holy Spirit convicting them. They made their hearts Adam and stone. So you got to be very careful to say that the Holy Spirit doesn't convict you. If you say that, then you can be like one of these people right here at Zechariah 7.12. Making your heart Adam and stone, resisting the Holy Spirit convicting you. That's pretty dangerous. But not only that, look at Galatians 5.17. The verse says, this proves every Christian has it. Every saved Christian has it. Look at this. For the flesh lusteth against the Spirit... And the spirit against the flesh. See that? And these are contrary the one to the other. So that what? Ye cannot do the things that he would. You see that? So you can't do the things that you would. Why? Because you got not just flesh in you. You got a spirit in you that's resisting it. So there is a spirit in you that convicts, that resists, that fights against the lust of the flesh of your sins. Every saved Christian has that. Yeah. person doesn't believe in that. Wow, I think he should check his salvation because that's what the Holy Spirit should do. That's right, amen. That's very important. All right. Acts chapter 7, verse 51. Look at this one. Ye stiff-necked and uncircumcised in heart and ears. See that? They, keep, they resist. They reject God's word. They're stiff-necked, uncircumcised in heart. No conviction. Why? Ye do always resist the Holy Ghost. That's very plain. See that? Now let's look at also verse 54. When they heard these things, so Stephen preached to them, when Stephen preached that to them, you're resisting the Holy Spirit? Did they get under conviction? Oh yeah, look at this. When they heard these things, they were cut to the heart and they gnashed on him with their teeth. They got mad. See? Because it really struck their heart. Yeah. Struck a nerve. See, the Holy Spirit, it does convict. But the most, the biggest proof is this. In Revelation chapter 2 through 3, when John was speaking here to the seven churches, so notice these are churches here. What did he say right here? Every church that he talked to, he said this. Open up your heart to the Spirit. Listen and heed to what the Spirit says. And the Spirit was rebuking them about their sins that they were messing up and wrong doctrine. So I think that should be more than plain evidence right there. So this is more than enough plain evidence that it's not just conscience that convicts you of sin. It's also the Holy Spirit.